Thank you for watching CTR TV and our Crumbling Foundations special report. Today we're talking to two of Connecticut's congressmen who have been at the forefront of this issue on the federal level. We have Congressman Joe Courtney and Congressman John Larson. Both of you have been taking a leadership role on this. It came to light about two years ago. Why has this been such a priority on the federal level? So um, again, as I think the map shows, uh, Eastern Connecticut and North Central Connecticut, which uh, you know overlaps um, our districts, has been the real ground zero uh, for this issue. Uh, although there now are starting to be reported cases in Western Massachusetts, and um, you know clearly when you look at um, you know how people buy homes and uh, finance homes, you know the federal government actually has a big role to play in terms of you know the mortgage interest deduction and. Um, and, and obviously, um, you know, there's been a whole series of avenues that we've been pursuing in terms of trying to pursue, you know, see if we can get federal help um, to this problem. Again, by the way, the realtors have been really very strong in terms of um, speaking up and advocating. I mean, obviously, you're at the front lines in terms of, you know, trying to help people sell homes, um, you know, understand, you know, what's happening and, uh, and have been a really big voice in terms of advocating. The, um, you know, looking at it, um, you know, John and I, uh, you know, have, again, kind of run the traps in terms of different avenues of help. You know, HUD has actually um, stepped forward and, and said that there's definitely programs that um, can provide some assistance, which, again, flows through the Department of Housing at the state level. Uh, but, you know, primarily the tax code has been, um, you know, the focus of our work. And John is a member of the House Ways and Means Committee, um, you know, has been instrumental in terms of, you know, connecting with Treasury and the IRS about uh, whether or not we can extend a provision of the tax code, the property casualty deduction, which is to help um, folks who suffer uninsured losses. Uh, it has been on the books for many years, and as, um, as our office staff you know, determined, uh, a, a somewhat analogous case down in the uh, southeast part of the country, Florida, Georgia, where people's homes who had bad drywall that came in imported from uh, China uh, and was not insured for, for loss, uh, were able to get the IRS to extend property casualty um, deduction assistance. Uh, and you know, using that precedent, it took us about 19 months of mm. uh, back and forth and you know, meetings and phone calls and conference calls. Uh, we were able last Thanksgiving to get IRS to, to, say, to, uh, to say yes. Got the uh, to IRS this. to agree to this last fall. Correct. In December? Congress passed and the President signed the tax reform bill, which threw a little bit of a wrinkle in that. Earlier this month in February, you got an extension on that. Explain all of that, what it means, what people sure. can benefit from this. Well, first of all, let me say that my colleague is way too modest. I mean, he has been the point of the spear for the entire state of the Connecticut. He's the one who brought uh, both the Senate and House together brought the insurance industry, brought in HUD, and got everybody focused on this issue. My brother Tim, who's a state senator who uh, overlaps part of uh, Joe's district as well, uh, called me out to, do, uh, to visit some of these homes. And when you see the devastation, uh, and also understand the impact on the loss of property tax and what that means to a community and the resale value of houses, et cetera, this was clearly a national disaster, but nobody brought it to focus like Joe Courtney. And every, every single bill needs to make sure it has a champion in the forefront, and, and Joe's done that. It happened that it came through the Ways and Means Committee, and the lead Democrat on that committee now also is Rich Neal from Springfield, who was very cooperative, and in the process of this, also was learning in real time that this had impact in his district as as mm -hmm. well. And I have to say and credit the uh, uh, Trump administration. I mean, Secretary Mnuchin uh, from the outset, uh, but uh, uh, Secretary Cotter also were very uh, helpful to us, and uh, uh, you know, Secretary uh, Costigan. Mm -hmm. We were able to meet with all of them. And of course, we're thrilled back in around Thanksgiving when we got the uh, very good news that they would treat this as Joe has indicated just like a casualty law, they had treated casualty losses with respect to China drywall. And then, of course, with the passage of the tax bill and the loss of that deduction, we were uh, deflated, but bound and determined and persistent that we would go back. And to their credit, they recognized that this was a severe problem and the impact it would have not only on families, but on communities and the economy. 
and consequently with the help of the tax advocate, but, but also with uh, uh, Secretary Mnuchin, who was just before our committee again mm -hmm. last Friday, and I thanked him publicly uh, and the Trump administration for working to make sure we provided a three-year window of opportunity so people, as they discover, uh, can still use this. It's not a silver bullet. It doesn't answer all of their concerns, but uh, I can tell you uh, with all clarity that uh, we wouldn't be there and we wouldn't, we wouldn't have gotten to this point if it wasn't for Joe Courtney. Let's talk about the, the specifics of that IRS provision. What does it say? What does it do? How does it specifically help people? So um, again, the um, tax guidance, which has the full force of law, uh, basically says that if a homeowner um, has experienced this very unique type of um, you know, cracking, uh, spiderweb cracking, that pyrotite, which is a metal substance when exposed to moisture, uh, rusts out and, and again, just totally um, erodes the, the foundation. Um, if they can demonstrate either through an engineer's report or that they went through the town assessor's office to get a uh, discount on their uh, assessment, which again was a process that the state legislature created uh, a couple of years ago, and then submits their costs of repairs, uh, that they can use that to, to basically write down or deduct off their uh, taxes, uh, their final net tax bill. So depending on where your tax bracket is, I mean, that's how you would sort of do the math. Mm -hmm in terms of what the, the actual savings. It's not 100% of the cost, uh, but um, again, as I said, it's, it's just you know one tool in the toolbox to sort of help people through this. Again, there's two homes in my neighborhood that actually did the repairs uh, in 2017. And again, they obviously are um, you know well within the safe harbor of this tax guidance. But as John points out, the three-year extension, which they uh, issued a clarification uh, a few weeks ago, means that if somebody goes out and does the repairs, you know, in this uh, warm weather season upcoming or in 2019 or 2020, that they can basically go back and do an amended return and get and claim the deduction. Uh, I think all, both of us agree that you know this whole you know effort in the tax bill that narrowed the scope of uh, property casualty loss was a really boneheaded move mm. and really hurts a lot of people who these are victims I mean these are not people who um, you know are claiming it because of you know some kind of gambit or you know um, trying to game the system I mean they're, they're doing it because they have to because of a loss that they uh, had no control over you mentioned that it doesn't cover the cost or the cost of repairs 100 percent right. but it is significant right it is I mean again it depends on what your tax bracket is but again so for someone who's you know, as high as 30 percent of the tax bracket I mean it's 30 percent so if you're you know you do the arithmetic you know it's roughly 150 to 200 thousand dollars to lift the house clean out the old foundation pour a new one and, and drop it back down uh, again that can be up to 50 grand and uh, as I said I've been having these conversations with um, some people who are very you know much in my um, mm -hmm. where I live and um, and the real, uh, excuse me, the accountants also were big right. allies in this. The Connecticut Society of Certified Public Accountants submitted a letter of support to Treasury. And I know they are already, you know, just totally um, hard at work in terms of, uh, you know, making sure that their clients um, are getting uh, the best information possible, whether they've already made the repairs or whether they are maybe are about to embark on it. The tax advocates and the realtors also played a very important role in this in terms of uh, ginning up the public response and putting that pressure on. It's a very unique situation. Uh, we, were, we were pleased that we were able to find case law, as Joe has pointed out, in China drywall, but uh, that provided us with the precedent. You know, we do think that it was a boneheaded, in fact, we would probably say that the tax bill in general was boneheaded because of its elimination of the state and local tax deduction, but that's another story for another day in terms of its ramifications on people who itemize their deductions in the state of Connecticut. But at the end of the day, persistency matters, and uh, I also think that they understood the travesty that had befell these citizens through no fault of their own, who could have known something like this, and then uh, to come up with the remedy. But it, it happens when somebody's out there and becomes the spear for the entire delegation, and it was all Joe Courtney. Wow. Is this a prime example of, like you said, not letting it drop, not letting it go yes. away? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's, um, uh, you know, we, we, there was pushback inside the IRS about whether or not, um, you know, this should um, occur because uh, if you read the language of the code, I mean, it actually, it's uh, for sudden loss. Uh, 
and, and uh, but again, I think uh, working with uh, Under Secretary Cowder, yep. who we met with personally and talked to a number of times, uh, he he was able to really, you know, I think, justify in his own mind that you know th this is kind of it is sudden, you know, in the terms of the fact that nobody anticipates, yep. um, you know, waking up someday and realizing that their uh, foundation has this very unique problem. Again, these are not settling cracks, which are normal. Mm -hmm. As your you know rank and file understand, um, this this is uh, you know something that really threatens um, the the value of the entire home. And again, mm -hmm. by the way, if if um, our friends in the state level who are rolling out this new uh, program with you know to provide actual resources, uh, again to the extent that there still is a, 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 a portion of the costs that are still uncovered, again this tax provision still helps people with that. So it's it, it's really based on what is the out-of-pocket loss, not necessarily whether or not you had to pay for the entire thing uh, in its entirety. So, um, you know, I think there's actually a good um, sort of dovetail of, uh, you know, the efforts that are happening at the state level as well as this uh, decision. We've talked about it. It's, it's a very localized, centralized issue. Have you heard about maybe other areas that are experiencing the same thing? Is it going to become a bigger picture sort of thing? Well, it's, it's a great question because mm. one thing we found out is that during the last couple of years, the U.S. Navy has actually put out a, um, an RFP for uh, a testing um, device that they could use in terms of their own military installations around the country. I mean, actually one of the biggest consumers of concrete um, is the Pentagon. Mm. and. Um, and they, uh, if you read the RFP, they actually cited what's happening in Connecticut and Massachusetts. And there was another, um, you know, part of the world in Canada, uh, in Quebec province, where they had, again, the same problem with bad um, concrete from a quarry that had pyrotite into it. So, so actually, it is starting to, to get noticed um, and, and realize that this thing really um, could happen in other parts of um, the country. And... Um, and that's why, again, I think John and I realized that, you know, for people who are like, you know, what do you, you know, this is local, this is parochial, um, you know, I think really realizing that the federal government has to be part of the solution is, is one of the reasons why we kept pushing. That was going to be my question. I mean, we are talking about a local issue that has become an issue on the federal stage. It doesn't happen a lot. It doesn't happen all the time. It doesn't. Uh, but, you know, throughout the country, we always see that in different uh, segments of the country, people experience catastrophe, and whether it's recent hurricanes or fires or mudslides or whatever. And then there are those instances like China drywall and like uh, pyrotite that are just come on and people, you would think that you'd have a hard time drawing people in because of the localization of the problem, but they immediately empathize with people who have experienced enormous uh, catastrophic loss through no fault of their own. And uh, clearly in this case, I think uh, people were able to empathize with the situation. And um, I'm uh, certainly glad that people up here empathize with uh, China drywall uh, when that first uh, presented itself as a major problem. So I think this will happen from time to time across the country, but, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, we the people in order to form a more perfect union. And so all the people come together, and in this instance, to assist us. And the tax advocate for the country, um, Nina Olson, couldn't have done a better job in front of the committee when we asked her these very poignant questions. And she was making a case not just, you know, for Connecticut, but for the entire country uh, when it comes to casualty losses like this. Flint, Michigan is another example where the lead pipe yeah. contamination mm -hmm. affected the water supply. And again, they did not get a federal disaster declaration, but they did. Uh, pr we did uh, when we did the the water infrastructure bill uh, provide some access for uh, the state of Michigan to get some low interest loans to to do repairs to that. And um, you know, again, that is a totally unique set of facts in terms of you know just the whole chronology of how that water system was modified, you know, very poorly. Um, but again, I think people recognize that, you know, this is something that as a country, we got to come together and help people, you know, when they have uh, situations that threaten public health and safety. If someone discovers that their home has this problem, they have a crumbling foundation, what are the first steps that they should take? Well, again, I, I think, um, you know, the 
the, you know, the best and most accurate way to sort of get to the bottom of it, and your members know this better than anyone, is to is to really talk to some engineers and mm -hmm. possibly yes, you know engage in, in uh, testing. Uh, and and I know that's the real focus uh, that the state is really trying to deal with at at the earliest or you know most. Uh, initial level is just whether we can come up with ways to help people with the cost of testing because it's not cheap it's mm -hmm. about three or four grand you have to take more than one core sample again mm -hmm. governor malloy has been meeting with the army corps of engineers uh, to see if there, there's assistance that they can get at least in the testing area uh, to do that and i and i think uh, again the state legislators uh, through the bonding uh, authorization testing is really um, I think the number one priority that's that's there again i and i think clearly as john said the assessor's office should be contacted because uh, there is a system in place right now for uh, homeowners to, um, you know, the value of their house is affected um, and they, they, to, you know, make them pay full freight in terms of property taxes uh, really just is not, it's not the market value. So Adding should, insult to injury. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Is there anything else either of you would like to add? Well, again, I think, uh, as John said, I don't think either one of us sees this as, uh, you know, the end. Right. I think we're, we are going to continue to, um, you know, talk to, to HUD in terms of, you know, ways that um, some of their programs, which, again, the Community Development Block Grant fund, funding that comes into the state of Connecticut. There's another uh, program which uh, they've identified that could uh, bring in a larger sum of money to the state. And, uh, and again, I think the whole issue of the property casualty loss needs to get revisited uh, in terms of how the tax bill was left. Exactly. And I also would say that uh, whenever you're dealing with an, one agency, uh, under the Obama uh, administration, they, had, they started to develop a program where agencies realize that they overlap as well. And when they start to see that they have a problem that they might not singularly be able to solve themselves, they look to see where those overlaps can be and how they can work together. That's how government should work. And so we'll be out there, whether it's uh, HUD, you know, or whether it's FEMA, whatever the case may be, uh, whether it's the IRS, uh, we want to make sure that we're doing everything possible to provide the kind of uh, relief that we can for our citizens. Okay, well, thank you both for taking a leadership role on this and bringing it, like you said, to the federal stage, although it is a local estate issue. Um, I know everybody in those regions appreciates your efforts, and like you said, it is an evolving, a changing issue, so we'll continue to check back Absolutely. and see how things go. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. Thank you for watching CTR-TV and our special report on crumbling foundations. Mm -hmm.